are backstage live with one of my all-time favorite bands, one of my all-time favorite vocalists, Mr. Corey Wells with Three Dog Night. Corey, thank you so much for being thank here. Thank you, thank you. It's great Again, to see always. you again. It's good to see you. Yeah, we're having a good time. I mean, Three Dog Night mania is happening again. I mean, I don't know if you're feeling it or not, but I'll tell you, out here, for sure. In well, I'm glad to know that. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's great. I mean, we've been working together a lot, especially lately. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, you know, you are clearly, clearly one of the biggest rock and roll bands in history. You well, thank know, you. Thank goodness, right? Thank you. Oh, yeah. That's great. That's what great. What do you think the reason is that your songs are so still so relevant? I mean, you're still selling downloads like crazy. You're still selling tickets at concerts. And why do you think your songs are so timeless? Writers. <laughs> and <that laughs> Those are classic just... writers. They were nobody at the time. Mm -hmm. uh, nobody really heard of Randy Newman and no one heard of uh, Laura Nero. But they wrote quality things. And, and so we were lucky that we were able to get those those songs and then give it our treatment and we were lucky that we had the combination it's the right time in the right place or you know so and those I think writers, that's what that's what the longevity is man. those writers I mean it's amazing these some of the writers that you've had uh, Elton John Elton John what did Elton do for you well actually we got a demo from him uh, on the second album I think it was that we got a thing called Lady Samantha from him and we liked the song we, we, we took it in the studio we recorded it and we thought that you know it had a lot of potential and it, it did and it was a great song but the story goes and from what i heard that he was ready to get out of the music business he was ready to go get a real gig from an eight to five gig and that he was done with it well when this album sold it sold a million they it put him back in the game again so so then later on, about a year later, I think it was maybe shorter, I'm not sure, but uh, we were in England and he came to see us backstage at the Marquee Club and said he had another song for us. And he wanted to give us this song and he, he, he came, it was raining outside, and he came and gave us this song and it was your song. Oh, so we wow. took it back to, to the States, recorded it, we got it done and on the album, but the album wasn't done yet. And then one day we hear his version on the radio. So your song was actually on your album. Uh, yeah, it was going to be on your album. Right. No before, way. Before he had it out. So. How close was it to his version? Was it the same? Was interpretation, uh, interpretive difference? Yeah, I think Danny did it kind of close, close to what else. We left out a verse. Uh, went on the roof, kicked off the moss. I think Danny left that out. Mm. So, in the beginning, you know, you guys. I mean, obviously, you had a, a career going prior to Three Dog Night, prior right. to meeting Danny, um, but. You know, when it all hit, I mean, obviously, so many records, so many hits in those first few years. Yeah. Um, did you feel it? Did you know what's happening? Or did you wake up one day and go, holy crap, there's chicks outside of my room? Something well, inside of my room. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, did it well, all just happen like that? Let, let me tell you something. We had a number one record in the United States, and we had just filed for welfare, uh, my wife and I. Yeah, really? yeah. They came down to my house and they signed a check on the spot. <laughs> That's Please. how bad it was. You ran to the bank, right? And so, uh, you know, it was a. People don't realize it takes a long time to catch up. The money to catch up. I mean, you may have a number one record on the radio, but the money doesn't show up until about six months, eight months later. Really? So. But was it different back then as far as the money? Without getting too deep into it, but I mean, the money when you get from a record, because they say today it's not about publishing. About it's about now you got to go back to touring. Touring making the money. Right. Back then, it's about the it, publishing. Well, no, no, it was. I mean, same thing. And it was always the touring. The touring was uh, the, the 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 records and the, and the recording motivated the touring. So it was it was the same. Way. It's basically the same. Way. Well, the thing is, though, your records are still selling. They're yeah. Still downloading. You're still selling tickets. I mean. You know, it's just not three dog nights not stopping. Well, yeah, we're lucky. We're lucky because we're still together. Last man standing. You know, yeah, that's so right. That was... <laughs> now I know that you're touring a lot and you're playing, you know, on the weekends. But I understand during the week you're doing a whole lot of bass fishing. Is that uh, what your passion is? My my passion is fishing. Period. And uh, I, I, you know, but recently I haven't been able to. I mean, it's just been like la last year we did 80 gigs. I didn't have time wow. to even get on my motorcycle to ride around the block. I mean, it was like, yeah, it was a little too many, too many times. So this year we're doing it a little shorter, but uh, it, it is, it, it's not leaving me much time, really. And I live back east now, so. Oh, where at? Yeah, I live in uh, western New York. I mean, your address, we'll just talk. Okay, oh, yeah, right. 
Um, in the driveway. No. What um, brought you back east? I mean, the weather out know, west is still Well, I, I had a little motivation. My house burned down in Malibu, and then the Malibu fires in 1994. That'll do it. And uh, and they gave me so much grief because they wanted me out because I was paying 1970 taxes, and they wanted somebody oh, in the 90s to come in and pay the big bucks. So um, my uh, architect said to me, look, Mr. Wells, I can build this house for you. It's going to cost you a million dollars. Uh, over a million you're gonna take another mortgage out and you're gonna get like 10 percent of the house and it's you know I, mean, I can't even guarantee it's if i was you i would take the money go somewhere else and buy twice as much for sure. half as much <laughs> pretty good advice yeah pretty good advice and uh, you know and and plus my wife and my, and, and i are uh, our mothers were getting on in their years and we had, i got a chance to spend the last five years with my mother and that's huge. she got a chance to spend the last 10 years with her mother so that's huge that's huge. great what is your favorite three dog night song i don't have any <laughs> that's an easy way out man just come on give me something <laughs> After 40 years, if you're talking about <laughs> the songs we do on stage, I mean, the luster has has faded. But I would say some of the songs that we, that weren't hits that we did, that I always felt like we're going to do a couple of those tonight. Um, I'm going to say a song called Freedom for the Stallion was great. Mm -hmm. um, a song that I did called You Can Leave Your Hat On, which we'll do tonight. Oh, yeah. And uh, You actually did that song? Yeah. The, we Tom, did, Jer the we, Tom Jones song? Or he did it, didn't he? did it 15 years later. Joe Cocker did it two years after us. Wow. We were the first to record it. It's a great song. Yeah. You're doing it tonight. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome, man. Because we we had we thought it had potential. And, uh, he was, thought what? Right. Right. Yeah, but it didn't. And then Joe Cocker did it, and he didn't have so much success with it either. I guess maybe it was in a movie or something. But Later on. Yeah, after yeah. He got much bigger. It, right. He did well. And he did a couple commercials with it as well. Right. Um, you know, over the years, we've been talking to you know, several entertainers and hundreds of entertainers, you know, but again, the Three Dog Night magic is something that even other entertainers, we were talking to Brett Michaels the other day, and uh, he was just telling me, you know, we are just talking about some of the other people that he likes, and we are talking about some of the other, you know, the Motley Crue's of the world and all that. Right. And he goes, hey man, I see you got Three Dog Night coming. I am such a huge fan. I said, really? He goes, man, that was real music. That was real rock and roll. You know, we're, what we're doing out there now, that's rock and roll to a different type of rock and roll, but that was real music. It's cheating rock and roll. Well, you know, <laughs> kind of a little bit. They tweak all the flats yeah. and sharps and... But with your, your, your magic, I mean, your magic still today, even to the rockers of today is big. Yeah, well, and our predecessors are all, you know, they're some of the people that I that are moved on and I thought that that was the music all my R&B favorites like uh, Bobby Blue Bland and Jimmy Reed and all those guys those blues cats and uh, Little Walter and all those people that were to me were like, oh my god you know Chuck Berry and all those people heck yeah would so, you say would you say that that was your principal uh, influences of yeah. the blues like with the happened to the Stones they said so many of them not just the blues, but actually the Chicago blues element was a big deal. Absolutely, it was absolutely it was Chicago blues. Um, you know, the, the the Brits have a feeling that we neglected, we didn't appreciate the black music, and, and they're wrong. There was a lot of musicians that were into that music. It's just maybe the bulk of America, the white white uh, didn't, you know. But there were a lot of people that were in, into that music. And I was one of them. And I, and I started to dabble between blues and doo-wop, which gave me the ear for harmonies. Sure. So that, that helped a lot, too. Well, I can't thank you enough for doing this, Corey. I'm just right. such a huge fan. And uh, please come back and see me, won't you? All right, absolutely, man. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thanks. We are backstage live with my all-time favorite bands, Three Dog Night, founding member, Corey Wells. We'll see you again backstage. See the ladies are insane there. And they sure know how to use it.